Thank you, Uppercase, for sponsoring this video. I only used my iPad for note-taking and digital planning when I first got it back in 2018. Now a few years later and the iPad has become a crucial part of not only my workflow, but also my life, as cheesy as that sounds. So today I wanna to take you through 10 main ways that I am using my iPad, which I hope will give you an idea of things that you can use your iPad for, or things an iPad might be a good replacement for in your own workflows. So just to get it out of the way, I obviously use my iPad for a ton of note taking and digital planning. I relied on it heavily when I was pursuing my degree in chemistry, and I still rely on it heavily for notes during meetings as my digital calendar. Digital planning and note taking open up a ton of possibilities, scrapbooking and memory keeping, meal planning and workout organization, business planning, product management, reading journal, just tons of stuff. If you don't already know, my entire channel is basically dedicated to digital planning and of course all things iPad, and I create digital planners and templates that you can load up in apps like GoodNotes to get that paper planner feel, but with the customization and versatility of digital planning. Another way I use my iPad is for project and business management, which I mentioned that you can also lump with digital planning. However, I like using Notion more so for that, which of course you can access on your computer and your phone as well. But I love having it on my iPad, especially with the increased keyboard and trackpad support that we're getting with the iPad now. And it just makes it easier than ever to keep track of all of the content that I wanna create for you. Speaking of content creation, the iPad is a big, big tool for that. And I use a ton of different apps under this umbrella, mostly Keynote, Canva, and Procreate. But between creating digital products or marketing materials or just reels, literally anything content-wise is coming from my iPad. I brought up Procreate for content creation, but it's also a tremendous way for me to use my iPad for drawing and illustration. It's nearly impossible to talk about the iPad without also bringing up Procreate, and it's for a good reason. It's a seller app for letting your creativity flow, and it is only available on the iPad. A lot of what I know about Procreate is from just playing around in the app, clicking on the things to see what they do, but the iPad has also served as a great learning tool for me as well. Platforms like Skillshare have really enabled me to harness the potential of an app like Procreate, so the iPad is very much a tool I use to learn other skills. There are other programs and platforms like Skillshare, but Skillshare is what I'm familiar with and have had great experiences using them to learn more about drawing and illustration on the iPad. Whether it's learning other skills or transporting into a different world entirely, the iPad is a solid device for reading as well. I normally read a ton of textbooks on the iPad for school. It was just a great way to cut the weight off my back, literally by having it on my iPad. And they have the Kindle app you can download as well. The new iPad mini is also the perfect reading size, just to throw that in. I don't do any long-term reading on it due to the screen, but it is great for articles and textbook skimming and just quick reads. Something I've started using my iPad for recently is Fitness Plus workouts, particularly on the new iPad mini. Taking it to the gym and using it as a display for the workouts, it's just a nice quality of life thing. I don't have to pull up stuff awkwardly on the gym TV or pull out my laptop when I'm at home when I wanna follow along. Of course, with it being on the iPad, it seamlessly pairs with my Apple Watch, making it for a really immersive workout, I will say. Because I'm on the go even more with my iPad now that we have the newly redesigned iPad mini, I've attached an AirTag on the inside of my bag. You all know I am a huge fan of the Nimble Grip and the Nimble Sleeve by Uppercase for my Apple Pencil, so I got the Nimble Shell for the AirTag. It's offered in five of the same colors as the other Nimble products with a new additional color and has the same soft premium silicone construction. I've tried so many other accessories, especially for my Apple Pencil, and I consistently go back and love the Nimble collection from Uppercase. The new Nimble shell they released for AirTags is no different. I've tested it out and there's no interference with the sound or GPS tracking of the AirTag, 
so I feel even more secure and that my iPad and other things are kept safe and reachable in my bag when I'm out. And it's always a plus to have well-built accessories that all match. Another just random but kind of quality of life thing is being able to use the iPad as a second display. So with my working style, I find it pretty difficult actually using different displays. I feel like I just need my attention all on one screen, but when I have used it and felt like I needed it, it was great to have. And with universal control hopefully coming soon, I'm even more excited for the possibilities that will come when using different devices, but in the same workflow. Video editing. I finally caved you all. I'm obsessed with Final Cut Pro and I wish some form of a, even just a reduced form was on the iPad, but sadly it's not. So anytime I need to edit anything, it was on my computer, which is really the only time I deviate from using my iPad. But I finally got LumaFusion on my iPad and though I'm still getting used to the program, it's a tremendous use case for the iPad. There are people out there who exclusively use the iPad for video editing, which is just phenomenal. I'm still hung up on Final Cut Pro, so I might stick to LumaFusion just for editing reels or TikToks, but it's still a great app and great use for the iPad. And after all of that content creation, reading, note-taking, video editing, you know, I'm going to end up with a ton of files to manage. And that's the last main way I use my iPad as a file and media management tool. Again, the great thing about iOS is how seamless everything is. I can access the files across my iPad, my computer, and my phone, but I particularly love organizing with files on the iPad. I know there are some people who are not fans of files, but it always just came through for me. I got a pretty decent system for organizing my files in a way that makes sense to me and I would be at a huge loss without it. You can add in your other drives to have it all in the same place. And I do have separate apps for things like Google Drive or Dropbox, but because the Files app is just so seamless with the iPad, it's just so much more fluid, just a lot better to use. So that was all the main ways that I use my iPad. I focused on covering things like productivity, organization, and skill learning, since that's what I know best and what I use my iPad for most. But I've used the iPad for things like media consumption, shopping online, watching videos and gaming. So I hope that gave you some ideas of things you can use your iPad for if you're struggling to find reasons to pick it up, or at the very least, this video was entertaining for you to watch. Don't forget to like this video and let me know what you're using your iPad for down in the comments.